What's up guys, it's Q here and in this video I'll be reviewing Isomizer latest feature which is related to analyzing a spot where here is on a big blind and we are facing a single limper. Uh, now this spot is mostly happening in heads up sit and go so it was created for heads up players mostly but it also helps to analyze spots in usual sit and goes or multi table tournaments where you're on a big blind and somebody limps from any position, not only a small blind. Now, how do we set up this situation? Just uh, put here on the big blind position and assign small blind or any other player bed size to limp. Now SMizer shows you usual um, two ranges which are, which are basically the same uh, as in a situation where you're facing Arrays. So here we assign a limp ray range. Hands which you think your opponent limped initially. Now let's start something simple. Let's say you have some Fisher opponent who just limps and doesn't really raise. Maybe he limps some wide range and well maybe he would raise some top hands. So it could go something like this. And then you assign his call range against your shove. That would be a part of his limping range logically. So here you can choose the hands which you think you will call your all-in with. Uh, now to the important part. We hit calculate button and we get some results. Now we can see the result for this spot. Uh, we can push 29% of hands. The important thing is that you need to understand what exactly is going on here. The difficulty about this spot is that uh, when we analyze push for hero, everything is normal. We know opponent's limp range, we know when he calls us, but what we don't know uh, is what happens when we actually check. So when we check we get top post flop, so it becomes very dependent on our hand, our opponent's range and our opponent's skill, and our skill. Uh, what exactly will happen post flop, so we need to evaluate somehow our expected value of check. So Isomizer allows you to do this here. You would need to mm, make an estimation yourself and uh, it can go from minus two blinds, which is probably not going to happen, to up to plus two blinds, which is also not going to happen. But you need to realize that your hand uh, and your opponent range should be defined in your choice here. Now, if you always fold post flop, like never do anything, just fold scared from your opponent, you will lose only one blind. So that is something which you really shouldn't expect uh, to exceed in negative size. Uh, let me switch to chips so you can see what exactly is going on here. So this shows what we expect. If we check, it shows that we will be left with 480 chips, which at 20 blinds level is equal to losing one blind. Uh, if we think that we get some equity with, uh, for example, sevens, we can assume that we won't lose too much with them. So we can uh, change our expected value of check and it will change the range of hands which we can push with. Now notice that you need to be thinking about your specific selected hand and your EV of check with this hand. So for example, mm, in this spot when your opponent holds a pretty wide range, we can expect to have reasonable equity post flop. Now let's see what possible types of limping range there exists and how our EV check will be affected by them. Uh, one type of opponent you can face is someone who is limping very strong range, uh, not really polarized, meaning that it doesn't contain any bad hands at all. Like just dropping you, like he's usually raising like 60% of the time and then he limps 8% of the time. Now, this usually screams that he is limping with monsters and uh, that you don't have a very good um, future if you try to bluff him. Let's assign him to something pretty tight. Now with this kind of players you can expect that they will call basically entire range when you push because they intend you to bluff into their limp, pretending to be weak and uh, this is their trap. So when somebody traps like this what you're basically facing is an all-in in terms of uh, calculation here. So if they limp 8% and they call entire range, 
what can you do? Basically, you face 8% uh, push, and against 8% push, you don't stand a lot of chances with weak hands. So, my Smizer will show you, but you only can push 10s plus and Ace King. Um, if they actually don't call entire range and uh, call some part of the range, you will find out that it becomes even tighter. Because we don't fold very often, but when we fold, uh, actually, when we call, they have even stronger range, so even tens against their range aren't doing any good now. But of course it depends on our EV check. So this is one type of spot when your opponent is extremely tight. Now he could be a little bit more tricky and he can be tight, like very powerful, and he can also hold some other hands in his limping range to trick you into believing that he's very tight and to force you to play um, in a specific way, pre-flop or post-flop. Maybe he doesn't want you to push too much, so he limps uh, some strong hands and, uh, for example, 6% of his range is strong hands and 20% could be some medium or weak hands, but it's not so easy to push against that, because if you don't know what to do, you can make a big mistake. Quickly, like if you push too wide and he actually calls often enough, you could be losing a lot of chips. So he will force you to make a mistake, preflop either by pushing too wide or too thin, or post flop, he could lead you to believe in that your top pair could be strong hand when he actually holds super strong hand, or he could fold you out when you check and he bets his weak part of the range and you fold. So this is interesting, tricky spot. And against that kind of range, probably preflop push could be efficient. Because post flop you could get into trouble because you have very small understanding of what exactly your opponent holds. So let's say he has some kind of this range now. Here we have strong hands, which represent 6%, and here we have some reasonably um, interesting hands, but they are not so strong. Now, what can we? Uh, predict about his call range. Well, we can actually see that he calls this part and falls this part. So he calls 6.5% out of 18, which is basically one third of the time he calls. So two thirds of the time he falls. Now let's see what we can do against this. Uh, not much, depending on our EV check. Now the worse you think your EV check is, uh, the wider you can actually push. This can be counterintuitive a little bit, but if you think about it, it makes total sense. If you think that uh, your check is so bad, then your push becomes a better option. But if you think that check is pretty good, well, then you shouldn't push. So here you are again in an interesting situation where you need to estimate what will happen with your hand post flop. Uh, those are two types of ranges where someone limps very tight range or very uh, uh, wide range was in the first time when we had him on 58% and polarized range which is something we have here. Mm, now this was an analysis for heads up spot but it was also possible to analyze any kind of uh, spot with isomizer now where you face a single limper from any position. Now, this is the same spot, somebody limps, and here is a big blind, same, you need to assign his limping range and call part of that, and you get your expectation, uh, control of check, and you get your range with this control. Now notice that when you are in ICM EV, ICMizer uh, will provide you EV check, which is calculated using ICM considering that after this hand you will lose this specific blind. So this is also possible to do for multi-table tournament. Like this, we have 18 players now, uh, someone limped on your table. No problem, I see Miser can analyze this too. Uh, so hopefully this was clear enough and it is pretty interesting feature because a lot will depend on player's estimation of his EV check. What you can do is you can check your folding manager maybe or like a tracker and see what is your expectation of check for different hands, maybe against different type of, 
types of opponents, so you have some kind of baseline. Remember that hard baseline is minus 1. So when the pot size is 2 basically post flop after some of the limbs. Against semi-wide ranges like maybe more than 25% limb, you can probably expect that you will win this pot sometime. So for example if you think you will win only 33% of the time, then you will be losing mm -hmm. Let's see, post flop you take down pot of two blinds 66% mm, of the time, so that would be uh, 0 0.66 plus, and in 33% cases you lose your one blind pot, so that would be minus 0 0.33. So the V is actually plus AV, so we would have something like 0 0.2 big blinds in this, in this situation. Mm, so it would be pretty tighter with your pushes, because right now your check doesn't look so bad anymore. So I hope it was clear enough, and please leave any questions in comments. Thanks, bye.